I realize that I don't smile as much when I'm talking about this subject because I feel so people should not be scared. It's been a good long time since I've ridden in Belgaum. Today is going to be after three years, and I'm actually riding with all of this gear. Let's see what the day feels like. What I want to talk to you guys today about is the balance between being careful and being fearful. Where do we draw the line between the two? Because uh, the phones that we have in our pocket today, they have access to our bank. They have access to our contacts and all of our personal messages, photos and so on. And we need to be careful with that. So let me start off by talking about careful. And this is where it can get a little scary. I've been seeing this blog post in the last couple of days and when I heard it, read it for the first time, I didn't believe it. So I looked it up and turns out that it's true. Uh, reliable sources like uh, BBC, TechCrunch and The Verge have been speaking about this. So it's definitely true. Last Friday, an Israeli group called NSO hacked a few WhatsApp accounts, a few. I don't know how many because it doesn't say. They had access to photos, videos, phone numbers, messages, and it could even turn on the microphone and the camera of their target, you know? That was so scary. And it's amazing how well they pulled this off. Are you ready? The attacker, gave a missed call to the target and that's it. <laughs> you were expecting a, line, a complex, sophisticated line of events, right? Me too, but that's it. All it took to hack the phone was to give a missed call. When I was going through this and I was trying to imagine how this might have happened, I think this is how it happened. So, you know, when you install WhatsApp for the first time, it asks you permissions to use your microphone, your camera, uh, your access to your storage and so on. So WhatsApp has the right to access this information. So, you know, when you call someone on WhatsApp, um, if the person that you're trying to call is on a phone call, then WhatsApp tells you that this person is on a phone call, right? So that's because it has access to your phone app because it asked for access and you said, okay. And it, the phone app told WhatsApp that I'm on a call and WhatsApp told you he's on a call, you know? So that's how that works. How I'm guessing the hack happened was when the call went over, the WhatsApp app has the right to look at the phone app. And I think that's where the hack happened. So uh, this is clearly a breach. This is not normal. I'm not saying it is, but this is how I'm guessing it happened. Instead of just accessing the phone app, it accessed the everything else. You know, it accessed the camera, the microphone and whatever, whatever else the attacker wished to access because you've provided this access. Now, how could you be careful about this? There's no simple way to answer that. Luckily for us, WhatsApp rolled out a new update last Monday, this Monday after the attack that is. It rolled out the update and it said that if you updated your app, um, this problem would be solved. WhatsApp allegedly urged its one and a half billion users. I didn't get a notification. I don't know what they mean by urge. But yeah, that's the careful side. You know, uh, when we look up stuff like this, we need to realize that we have to be a little careful, not putting all the sensitive information in our phone, like our ATM pin and all of that stuff, because even if they do access it, they shouldn't get it from our phone. You know, so a good way to make sure that you're afloat is to keep your app updates on because companies fix their bugs via app updates. How you could do that is just go to the Play Store and hit this hamburger icon up top left. That's the menu. Hit the menu and go to settings and under auto update apps, leave it as 
um, over Wi-Fi only. So the message over here is don't keep a lot of sensitive information on your phone and update your apps regularly. I'm done with the careful part. Now for the fearless part. I receive these messages in uh, groups that I am in and I, uh, th this really bothers me how scared and worried people can get. You know, it's good to be careful, but we also should not be very frightful of everything. And this is a message that I got, okay? Just check this, hear me out. So it said, dear all, kindly note when you send a message by WhatsApp, you see some tick marks and this is what they mean. One tick mark means message is sent to, I'll just move to the part where <laughs> three tick marks, three blue ticks may indicate government has noticed that message, that the message, two blue ticks and one red tick mark indicate the government has taken action, one blue tick and I'm, I'm tired, I, I'm not even reading all of this stuff. I looked this up and it's not true, this is fake news and we need to be careful before we send out messages like this. When you get a message like this, look it up first online to see if it's true. That's what I did with the careful part when I told you, uh, when I saw this blog post and I don't know where I saw it, but I made sure that I looked it up and waited for a credible source to confirm it, you know. Maybe it's too late, but don't scare others. If you're scared, don't send that message to everyone else. Imagine this guy, okay, he wakes up in the morning and tells to himself, how do I make sure that I write a message and send it out and it becomes viral? in a way that people would be really anxious and scared. Hmm. Don't let that guy have his way. India is one of the biggest users of WhatsApp. And I was talking to my teacher earlier this week, my childhood teacher, and she said she receives around 200 or 250 messages every single day from WhatsApp groups. I made it a point for my own sanity to get out of all the WhatsApp groups that I don't consume data from you know i mean if i don't need absolutely need to be a part of this group you're making micro decisions every time you read it you know decisions to be anxious decisions i don't know you're reading it and you're giving it your attention and it drains you mentally too much information is really a problem that we are facing with today and we should learn to detox and get rid of these groups, especially where people are sending out scary messages like this. Even if it's your childhood buddies from I don't know where, get rid of that stuff. Stay in touch with people that you really care about. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. The first time I sneezed on camera, I guess. Thank you so much for watching this video guys, take care of yourselves and I'll see you guys next week. And until then, keep learning.